Today on Roaming with Alyssa, we're going on the hunt for storm shelters and sirens. Of course, there are many storm shelters in the Midwest, but most of them are in people's yards. And obviously, we're not going to go tromping onto their private property to have a look. But sometimes we find these shelters in public places and get the chance to explore them. I know going inside a stuffy cement block in the ground doesn't sound very exciting, but we don't have tornado shelters in California, so it's exciting for us. Sirens are interesting because they come in different shapes and sizes, and the wail of one going off during a storm is so ominous sounding. Even if you're not feeling afraid, just the sound of it will suddenly put fear in you. Okay. I'm not okay. I'm not okay. Dad, where do we go? So let's have a look at some of these storm shelters and sirens and have a little crash course history lesson while we're at it. Tornado sirens didn't really start out as tornado sirens. They were originally intended to warn people of air raids during the Cold War era. It wasn't until 1970 that these sirens were first used to warn the public of a tornado. Now let's go back even further in time before air raid sirens existed. In the 1880s, an alert system was devised to warn the town folk of a tornado through a MacGyver type system. The plan involved stringing telegraph wires around the southeast side of a town that were designed to break in high winds. Then these broken telegraph circuits would automatically trigger alarm bells and fire a cannon, thereby alerting the town. For the 1800s, this sounds like a pretty decent plan, right? Well, not so much for scientists, because they thought alerting people of a tornado would incite panic and actually do more harm than good. The word tornado was banned from being used in official releases until 1938. It could be used in warnings, but it was still banned in forecasts. Let's jump ahead a handful of years to 1950 and you arrive at the Federal Civil Defense Act. The federal government required public warning systems, which included outdoor sirens. Eventually, these sirens were allowed to warn for natural disasters, and that's where we arrive at the first use of them in 1970. Early sirens were controlled remotely from civil defense or emergency management offices through analog telephone circuits or at the side of the siren by a control panel. Sirens are now activated remotely by radio transmission from emergency management agencies or other local public service agencies. These warning sirens usually produce 70 decibels, which is equivalent to a normal radio volume, and they can go out about one kilometer in range. And the larger sirens can put out almost twice as many decibels and twice as much distance. Much like the siren, the storm shelter was also a product of the Federal Civil Defense Program. Fallout shelters designed for protection from nuclear warfare were built and people were encouraged to build their own shelters stocked with survival provisions. For families living in Tornado Alley, these shelters offered dual protection. Bye-bye fallout and bye-bye tornadoes. These shelters were designed with an angled door to allow debris to slide off so the door wouldn't be blocked. And if debris did pile up, the angle reduced the force necessary to open the door. The storm shelters are usually made of reinforced concrete and new ones are sometimes actually made out of septic tanks that have been modified with the steel door and vents. Many of these have little turbine vents at the top and since mildew can be an issue in these shelters, the vents help with air circulation and reducing condensation. So let's go through some of these shelters now. We're just outside of Elk City and we drove past this Canute Heritage Center. And I said, oh look, there's a storm shelter. So we just pulled in it. Oh, show God, that's, okay, I don't know why, that but that, look at that, old that weight. weight scared the crap out of me. You wanna go down there? No. Probably won't be able to get back out. I can't. Let me give it to you so that's the really flash dang smelling down here. Oh shit, there's a dead bird down here. Oh. Ew, Dad, there might be a dirty stuff down there. Still worth a look. Oh. Can you see the flash? <laughs> oh, Dad, is the flash on? Looks like they just sit around in here and wait for the storm to pass. Wow, all hell is breaking loose upstairs. Okay. Oh, 
Dad had to put his t-shirt up with his nose. We're in Sweetwater and we're at the school and we just passed. They have a shelter there and a shelter here. So dad's gonna take a look inside. Oh, dang, this that's king deep. Size. King size. Oh, that's a creepy hook. This guy has a whole school. You look on the wall right there. It says beware, but ew. Why is it written like in blood? What's down here? I don't know. It goes in really deep and then goes up the other side. Oh, this whole thing is a shelter for the school. Yeah. Even there's like smears. What is that? I don't know. I don't know, but that beware is really creepy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, stink bugs love it down here. So this is where they sit during the big tornadoes. Very cool. Yeah, this is all pipes to breathe. Yeah, I filmed that. Oh, down there. No. Ew, they have the little folding chairs down there. Should I walk down there? No, I don't know. Okay. Okay, I'll hold the door for you. Watch out for those spider webs. Yeah, I see them. Yeah, the stair stairway looks solid. No. 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 Typical prayer circle. So this apparently was the old school tornado shelter. Yeah. Supposedly this pin holds it. Underneath or something? Holds it down. Yeah. I mean, it just doesn't seem like it would really oh, hold it. Let's go right there. There's a hole. Hmm. I saw that it's on the inside, inside yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, look, there's an old police car back here. Woodward? Yep, Woodward. We just saw they have the storm cellars open. We were so excited, we screamed about it. So we're turning around to go check out the yeah, storm cellar. Do you think they, they connect there. underground, like yeah, under the tile? Maybe they can have an access point. We're going to park right next to it. Okay. okay. How exciting is this? This is a treat. We're driving down, and this storm cellar is What does that sign say, Britt? The WPA what? It said it was originally for children and pedestrians to safely cross under Route 66. And now it's just, that's creepy. Maybe that's why they have it open so that we can cross Route 66. There's a can of something. Well, it's been used as like a dumpster apparently. Thing, but it's totally a storm shelter. Yeah, they said now it's used for that. Yeah. Oh, they really beat this up. Look at this. Where's look, Brittany? Look, look at this layer here. This yeah. is beyond some of those other places we saw. Yeah. Okay, that's where we started. Let's go. Okay. Now we're going back. Look, USA 1939 WPA. Nice. Oh. Yeah, we're break. See that was? <laughs> yeah, Red River Bird. For sure. It's really red and dusty. Um, this mm -hmm. What if somebody closed the thing and said you gotta sleep in here for the night? Um, Would you be scared? Are they it Just as a test. Okay, we are loving the town of Paducah. We just found a fun storm cellar here after we explored the abandoned hospital. See this counterweight right here? Yeah. So the weight's gonna go down. That thing is not coming up. Okay. What about the other side? That looks broken. Yeah, it looks broken. Look at the air vent for people that are down there so they can breathe while the tornado's going over. Oh, this one can come up. Oh, 
shit. Wow, it's really heavy. Uh, yeah. Achoo! Whoa. That weight is broken though. This doesn't look like it would stay no, in place. Super heavy. You guys got any working storm sellers? Yeah. Okay, we have a local that says they can lift the storm cellar, Dad, because we couldn't quite get it open. Oh wow! Look at that. That was a little too easy. Even got a sofa down there. Oh, that is creepy deep. You got a, a, a lizard. Oh. Look at this. <laughs> Leaping oh, lizards. Yeah. That's hilarious. Oh, I don't know. Hang on. I don't know yeah. if my uh, problem wonder... is how would you get out of there with this heavy thing? Over I there? guess that's you'd have to crazy. push it with. Yeah, right. there's chairs and sofa. That's Thank funny. you very much. I wonder how they got that sofa uh -oh. down there. Uh oh. That's probably the first time that's been open in 20 years. Oh, tornado shelter here. Let's get this. Oh, it's the community center. Community center. Oh my Where's gosh. The community center house this is, shelter. what is that? They're like town well? <laughs> Here is their town shelter. Okay. Oh so my. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Look at what is that stripping? Oh my gosh, it's like collapsed in down there. Honestly, I take you can't my chances see. with a tornado. Yeah, I know. That is frightening. That thing yeah, is collapsed in down there. This weird doghouse thing is Tell collapsed me. down well. into there. Good luck getting in there for safety. <laughs> okay. Yep. Oh my gosh, look at all these nails poking out. Yeah, you probably get hit by flying debris in problem. there. It's like a tornado of nails inside the shelter. Let's have a look at these sirens now and you can hear what each one sounds like. I'm not sure what this weird Dr. Seuss thing is. It's a tornado siren. Are you sure? Yeah. This funny tuba looking one is the ACA Aller Tour, built by ACA, the Alerting Communicators of America. ACA actually started out as the Beersock and Niedermeyer Co. in 1873. The U.S. Department of the Army granted this company a contract to manufacture outdoor warning sirens in the 40s for the Pacific Theater. In the late 1960s, they changed their name from Beersock and Niedermeyer to the Alerting Communicators of America, and they began producing new models, including an early prototype of the Aller Tour. Even though the Aller Tour was a pretty popular siren, it had a lot of issues like the chain drive snapping, corrosion of the chain, and some other issues, so it met its demise around 1982. <laughs> Okay, that's enough of that. This is Federal SD-10 Siren. It has an air intake at the bottom and a motor at the top. It was built in the late 50s, but production ceased around the late 70s. And at a distance of 100 feet, it's about 109 decibels. And get this, it weighs 500 pounds. <laughs> This funny spaceship looking one is the ASC I-Force 3200. At a distance of 100 feet, it's about 128 decibels. Whoa, that one is really annoying. It starts out like a weird clown arcade game and quickly becomes super obnoxious. And this one is the Federal Signal Model 5 producing 100 decibels at a distance of 100 feet. A 
I couldn't find much information about these two, so if you know anything about them, let me know in the comments below. Okay, this was our little tour and history lesson into storm cellars and sirens. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. See you next time!